I've got a funny video for us today on my classic uh, Craftsman 917 lawn tractor. Uh, it's about brakes and the reason it's so funny is that I actually didn't even realize that it had brakes. Uh, so for the last year I've been um, basically rolling out of control right, at the I'll boat launches okay. because I had no brakes. Uh, thanks to a helpful commenter I discovered that there is a brake and I'm not going to show you how to do it because there are better videos on that. I'm just going to show you it. When you get this, uh, we'll call it the passenger side wheel off, it will expose this little tiny disc brake assembly in here. You see there's not a lot to it. There's a little caliper that uh, it's the most basic engineering design that you've ever seen. Um, I've got a broken stud right here, so we're going to have to work on that. Let me just take this off, give you a closer look. Alright, let me show you this thing. There's not much to it. So there's this little brake shoe, or pad I guess, and then there's a backing plate right there and then there's two pins in here pull this off here you can see there's there's two of these pins two little pins and those push out on this plate and push this um, there's a little spring right here to push it back and this is the funny, this is, I find, sort of hilarious. It's bent up, and right now it's not pushing down on these pins. But when you turn this thing, it's going to ride this way and push it down. See that? So, here's the pad. Let's turn it this way so you can see it. See it go up slightly? <laughs> I don't know, it's got to be like the world's most basic technology, but hey, <laughs> it's probably worked since the 1950s, so why change it? Let me show you what this pushes on then. So in here is the world's most adorable little rotor, and this sucker will just come right off if you want to take it off. And it's kind of greasy in there, that's not good. Behind there, you can see the other brake pad, which is right in, let's see, down at the bottom. So that's that's just opposite the one uh, on the outside. So that's pretty much all there is to it. This will come out, too. And if you needed to replace these, you certainly can. I can't imagine actually wearing all the way through them, but they do have replacement ones. So that's all there is to that. Now... Unfortunately, when I was taking this apart last time, I broke the end off this nut. No, I was not using an impact wrench. I was just using a regular ratchet and broke that off. So I am going to see if I can get that out. I've got some ideas. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to try to get this stud out is I bought the biggest vice grip I could find. It's the 10-inch one. And let's see if I clamp this on here, if I can just spin it out. So I snapped it off right there, which leaves me with one option. And that is now I gotta drill that out and tap that hole. All right, so it goes. I don't have a lot of experience doing this kind of thing, but here's how I think it should work. Let's see if I can start just a little hole. 
the punch right in the middle. I, don't know, I may not be able to make a dent in here. Hmm? All right, so there's a little dimple now. Now I am just going to use a tiny drill bit and get increasingly larger. As long as I'm, you know, the drilling seems to be going okay. I remembered I had this, I think it's, well, I call it an easy out that I was closed out at Menard, so they bought it. I've never used it, but um, I used this end to drill that hole. Theoretically, this end should be able to go in here and pull this out. We'll see, I guess. Let me put it in my impact driver. Where is that? Oh, here it is. Hmm. I don't know. It, it may work, it may not. Um, I'm having good luck drilling. I'll keep working on it. All right, so I got our tap and die set. If you've never used one of these before, the idea is that we're gonna drill a hole that's the right size for the bolt, and I bought a couple of new bolts. Um, the other one I was able to check, and it's a quarter inch course, or 20 threads per inch, I guess. So you drill a hole, and then you run this thing in there which will cut let's see that picture sort of will cut threads that your bolt will work on now it's good I didn't have any of taps they're all at home so this thing is what you need to put on the end so that you can sort of screw it in straight I'll show you how it works all right, so I've already drilled this hole out pretty much to the right size I'm going to use the drill bit that came with it. Okay. So you got, now I know I've got it drilled out exactly the right size, so now I'm going to use our tap. Quite crunchy, and what I think is happening right now is that it's really just—it's just stripping out the uh, remaining threads of that bolt that were in there. Not even so much cutting threads as just cleaning out the threads that were there. But either way, I now have a place to put my new bolt. All right, we got a brake pad in. We got a new bolt in. Let's put this bolt in. Okay. There we go. Now, this... Oh, I should put this on first. Okay. Okay, so I got this rod through this hole. Um, I think I think one of the key things is that you got to get this nut exactly tight enough that it's pushing back far enough because it's is this the thing that's going to push those pins in, but not so tight that it's going to bind and keep this thing from going forward. Um, and then you can see there's a uh, adjustment here, right here. So again, very simple stuff, but uh, you want this to be, so when I, let me go push that um, engagement pedal. So this is the disengages the clutch. So when you disengage the clutch, that's gonna, um, that is gonna push this brake pad. So when you push this back, it's gonna, shove those pins in and push that 
pad against the disc. Now, I had it too tight before, which one made it hard to push far enough to start the motor, but more fun was that it basically set something almost on fire back here. It got so hot, so don't make it too tight. Just make it, I think, tight enough. All right, I managed to get the parking brake on, and you can see this spring is completely compressed at that point, which I think is a little bit too much. I want to, I don't know how to adjust this, but I'm going to back this off a little bit so that we're not completely at the limit as far as that spring goes. It's kind of a pain because if I don't get it right, it's sort of higher off again, which I guess is a big deal, but let me just back this off a little bit and see if that is still enough to you know, lock up those tires. All right, I think we got brakes. I think we got them adjusted right. I gotta go put my boat in the water or take my boat out of the water. Uh, and on that lengthy trip, we'll see if it starts on fire again. I don't think it's going to. It feels like it's adjusted well and that spring is on right, so it's returning it. So, there you go. There's your little anatomy lesson for those uh, brakes on your classic craftsman. <laughs>